It wasn't pretty, but at the end of the day, the Oilers victorious with a 3 nothing blanking of the Chicago Blackhawks. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Oil Stream postgame show. Tom Gazzola with you alongside YouTube Trev. Matt Cassian, our game analyst, will be joining us shortly. The Oilers now winners of 15 in a row. And they are absolutely cruising this one. A better game overall, certainly, than what we saw Tuesday from the Oil against the Columbus Blue Jackets. Uh, all right. Join the conversation. As always, hit us up in the nasty chat if you're watching on our EST YouTube channel. Like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And then if you're listening on your way home from the rink, a lot of people trying to beat the traffic, figuring this one was well in hand and they were right. Uh, we appreciate it, and you can text us, 780-218-9999. Your thoughts on the Oilers' 15th straight victory, 28th win of the season as this team looks to close out the month with another victory. Uh, it is going to be the Nashville Predators on Saturday to make it potentially 16 straight Wins for the orange and blue, and uh, we'll see if they can get it done in that afternoon matchup against the Preds. But the focus tonight is the 3 0 win over the Chicago Blackhawks. Let's welcome in our game analyst, former NHLer Matt Cassian. If he's ready to go, Cass will unmute himself. Yes, sir. I had myself muted before we even started, so uh, I caught myself. Whoops, my bad, Cass. Well, 3 0, the orders win it. It was not a masterpiece, but it was effective. They were patient. How would you sum up that win tonight over the Hawks, Cass? Um, <clears throat> it was just okay. It was okay. I mean, you, you got the win. You did just yeah. enough. You did just enough. Just enough. wasn't wasn't pretty. Um, I felt I felt like I don't know if you touched on this yet, Tommy, but I felt like they really they were really perimeter again for the first two periods of this hockey game. First period in particular, like they had a ton of zone time, a ton of looks. Wasn't pretty, didn't end up being pretty, but hey, no. you got another win. You got another win. I wondered during the third period, I'm sitting up there and I'm going, okay, is this a patient win? It's like, ah, no, nah, not really. I don't think that's the right way to describe this game tonight. Um and then there were a few moments in the third where I thought to myself, are they toying with Chicago? And it, I don't think that. It kind of felt like that. You, you don't, yeah. Actually, this was a thought that crossed my mind. So I wanted to, I'm happy you went there because I forgot when I sat down and now I remember that this is something I wanted to talk about. Um, <clears throat> it kind of reminded me in some ways, and I've seen this happen, when you have like really high level players and they're playing against players that are not at as high level, it can actually be challenging. Like it could, and, and I'll just, I'm going to go like to a charity tournament, for example, if I'm playing in right. a charity tournament uh, and I'm playing against a goalie, that's, that's, you know, just a, a below average uh, rec league beer league goalie. It can be harder to score on them sometimes because they do things you don't expect them to do. And, and yeah. in some instances, b because you know, they move somewhere and you would anticipate them to move back a different way or to be in a different position, like where they should be. And they're just not, they're not where they right. should be. And it throws you off a little bit, um, and it kind of it kind of felt like that, you know, particularly with that McDavid and Drysaddle line, like where it was like they were toying with them a little bit, right? But it was almost to the point of being dangerous, where it was like, okay, yes, you're way better. Yes, you can control the puck. Yes, they can't take it away from you. But when are you actually going to get the puck to the net? Now, eventually they do, and eventually they, you know, they score and um, score off the rush more than, than that end zone time. Uh, with that, with the Hyman goal in particular, but yeah, um, yeah, it, it, at times it kind of felt like that. Like it really felt like if Edmonton just wanted to hold onto the puck and kind of skate around in Chicago zone, they could do it, and they and they did for stretches of time. Yeah, I, it just it was a thought that crossed my mind, but I didn't want to really give them that because I was like, well, Chicago put up a fight, and yeah, considering they got smacked around by Seattle yesterday, six two, and flew in late night. No morning skate. I was like, I don't, I don't know. But yeah, there were those moments, Cass, and you're right. And to me, it was in the third period where I, I'm like, maybe maybe they are just toying with them. At the end of the night, it's a 3 nothing victory. They were good. They were good enough, I guess. is If we went with good enough tonight, Cass, we can suffice 
Yep. To say that I, I that's, think that's a fair perfect, way to that's, put it. Yeah. That is a perfect way to put it, Tommy, because it was it wasn't it wasn't great. It wasn't like it was uh, atrocious or awful. It was just good enough to get the win. And and you know what? Let's actually what you know, that's everyone that played out. Let's give uh Calvin Picard some credit. Yes, absolutely. S- you know, stops stops a uh you know penalty shot, great save. Played a solid game. Still comes out with a shoot uh, with a shutout, which is which is fantastic. Backup goalie hasn't played in a while. You want to talk about building trust? And I know Chicago not very good, not a very good team. But hey, backup gets a shutout. Made good saves. Made some good saves. Yeah, absolutely, he did. I thought he was rock solid for them. So kudos to Calvin Pickard. Maybe Joaquin Gage is out there stewing after not getting his. Oh, he's wish mad. Of Stuart he's mad. Skinner. He's mad because he's like, oh, Skinner would have got a double shutout. <laughs> that that is exactly what Joaquin Gage would say. Yeah. Uh, Edmonton three nothing winners over the Chicago Blackhawks. Get those texts in. Any questions or thoughts on the game, or you want to fire cast something? Uh, hit us up seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. And in the nasty chat, but the nasty chat has a life of its own, as we know by now. Uh, let's get to the scoring summary and the game stats from Edmonton's three nothing blanking of the Hawks. No scoring in the first period. Uh, the shots were 8-7 Chicago, and you're like, what are the Oilers doing? Are they going to wake up? And uh, They weren't as sloppy or loose as what we saw Tuesday in Columbus or against Columbus, but it was kind of it was ho-hum until the second period when Connor McDavid got one on the power play, his 18th of the year from Ryan Nugent Hopkins and Leon Dreisaitl to make it 1-0 Edmonton, a minute 37 in a backhander. For McDavid, uh, third period. Now Zach Hyman, his 29th goal of the season from McDavid and dry saddle to make it two nothing. Great feed by McDavid to slip it over to Hyman. Hyman knows where to go when he's playing with Connor McDavid. He tucks it past Peter Morazic at 6:34. Two zip oil at that point, and then for good measure to put the game on ice, McDavid third point of the game, second goal. Makes a three zip at 18.45 into the empty net. Dry saddle picking up the lone helper on that one. Uh, game stats for you. Shots on goal, 34.27 in favor of the Oilers. Face-offs, 58.5 to 41.5 in favor of the Oilers. A power play, one for one. No penalties for the Oilers tonight. Discipline, okay. Hits. Well, technically, you had the penalty shot. Well, so, yeah. Of. And and then McDavid had that. That, that was garbage. coincidental. That, don't call that. Don't <laughs> like, call that. No, call the holding for 15 seconds beforehand. Yeah. And then, you know, he's held, he's held, he's held. So he finally gives the guy a shot and then you give them both a penalty. Give me a break. Yeah. So the PK didn't have to do anything tonight. No, the orders yeah. did take a penalty. Uh, I should clarify that. Hits 28-19 in favor of the Hawks. Block shots 13 for Chicago to Edmonton's nine. Edmonton with 12 giveaways. Chicago with seven. Edmonton with 12 takeaways. Chicago with eight. All right, let's get to uh, the man celebrating one year meeting Dusty and I. YouTube Trav. Trav, get in here, pal. Uh, so, how you feeling up, about boys? the Oilers game? What's, what's up? up? What's up? What's up? <laughs> yeah, what's up? Uh, yeah, like I'm not going to lie. It was, uh, it was a little bit. It was, it, it was a win, but it was kind of a snooze fest. Uh, there's not a whole lot to like. I will say one thing. You guys haven't talked about it. I, I'm so pumped for uh, Dylan Holloway. Like, I, I, I really do think the Oilers have a player in him. You know, we talked about it before he went out. That was the best he's played. But like tonight, just I just I, I'm reminiscing back to what we saw two years ago when he was just lights out in the preseason. And then, you know, this this preseason, he was he was also, you know, one of the best Oilers. Uh, he, he's looking so good. He's getting those touches. He loves being the center. And that's what we're seeing. He loves carrying the puck. He's not shying away from carrying the puck and it's it's so nice to see so if the Oilers play their cards right which I think they will he's got all the confidence in the world right now and we're seeing that with the, the play that he, he made such a nice play in the third period there to set up uh Oh, I think it was Clowder. Um, like, just it was an unreal play. So that's that's definitely a player I'm going to be watching, uh, keeping a keen eye on. And I think it's it's only up from here. I don't think he's going like I, he's not taking a step back. It's all forward for Dylan Holloway. Uh, that's that's one thing I was super pumped about. Um, and uh, as well as you guys talked about Pick- uh, Pickard just being just being a beauty, like uh, just a stud all night long. He made some really good saves. Uh, he was kind of I don't know. It was a, a little bit of retro style. He, he kind of fell on a few saves, but he. 
was uh, he was looking good. So uh, pretty cool, solid night. The Oilers got it done again, 15 straight. It's just I don't. It doesn't even. It doesn't even make sense. Like it really, it's hard to even fathom. Like I, I can't comprehend 15. It's hard enough to get 15 losses in a row, let a, let alone get 15 dubs. And the Oilers have somehow found a way. Uh, they're playing with fire a little bit the last few games, and they kind of started a little bit better, I think. But uh, for the most part, I mean, it's just it's it's actually insane. Uh, the the first line, I think it was okay. I don't know if that's the right decision. They they probably would have got. You know, uh, like you know, it's tough to say, right? Because uh, they got the win now, but they got their looks. Obviously, Leon's just just lights out with those passes. I, I can I can just watch that all day. It's it's so incredible to see. He has the puck. He gets it back. It's right on you know Hyman's stick. So a lot to like. Uh, not a whole lot. You can't really nitpick at a heck of a whole lot when the guy when you know the Oilers are on a 15 game heater. So that's uh, that's my uh, analysis on on the game. And yeah, one year of uh, one year, Tommy, isn't that crazy? Crazy. I remember like yeah. uh, yesterday. It. Yeah, Love it's pretty it. insane. So you thanks. Great work, Travis. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Love it. Love it. Really? Love it. Um, can I can I jump on? Because I think you've made actually some fantastic points there that I yeah. think we we all should we all should unpack. Yeah, let's do um, it. Let's start. Let's start unpack. with the Holloway. Let's unpack. Yeah. Let's start with the Holloway. Three solid games from Holloway. Really, really solid. Um, uh, you know, I was really hoping he'd score. He had that one great shift where he had, you know, three pucks to the net. I was really hoping one of those would go in. Um, he just kind of looks, and and we saw it right before he got hurt, but he kind of looks like he's he's found what he needs to do to make him successful. Would you guys agree? Yes. Good puck touches tonight, it felt like. Speed, confidence, all that stuff, Cass. Is that fair to say? Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, he he was around it. No, I I liked his game. It was a it was a solid game uh, again for him tonight. Yeah, and and also Trev, I'm going to completely agree with you. Like, I, and and I said before the game, and I I liked going to the McDavid dry cell and running with it. But I think you're right. I think going into Nashville, I think you go back to your old lines. That that to me, playing against that team as opposed to Chicago, absolutely roll back to that. Yeah. Where it, you put Corey Perry. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Trev. Sorry, yeah, yeah, like it, it worked. Uh, it worked putting them together. It, it, it's been it's been a while, and they kind of had that jump to it, which we we kind of expected. And I think Connor and Leon, you know, they like they really like playing, uh, sharing the ice whenever they get those chances. But the, you can't really rely on it, and I don't think that's uh, something that we've seen Knobloch do. Like he doesn't have those tendencies where he's going to rely on you know running those two. So yeah, bring it back. It, it worked. So what was working before really really was was working, right? So I think you definitely bring it, bring it back to what they had in the last, you know, five games or so. 780-218-9999. It is the Oil Stream post-game show of the Oilers with a 3 nothing shutout over the Chicago Blackhawks. And uh, Norman at Combine's like, are we critiquing a win, guys? Ha <laughs> ha, good game. Congrats for 15 wins. Go well, Norman at Combine. Yeah, I guess we were, but... Yeah, but not not in a crazy like, way. Not in a crazy Not crazy in a crazy way, way at all. No, yeah. I mean... It, it, <laughs> We're not nitpicking. I mean, we're saying, yeah, we're there's things. Saying. And they they didn't play an f- unbelievable game. They, they played a solid third. Yep. McDavid, multi-point night. Yep. You know, three points again for him. I was sad. I was sad, guys, that Hyman didn't get, I didn't get that empty netter when he fell. He, he had first another guy, one against Chicago. The first Chicago. guy to 30 would have been awesome. Yeah, he had one like that against the Blackhawks in Chicago where he, like, whiffed on the empty net. Like, he needs a goalie. And he needs a defenseman like on his back before he can score a goal. When he's got a clear lane to an empty net yeah. <laughs> doesn't against the Blackhawks <laughs> of, of all teams, he can't bury them for whatever reason. But McDavid yeah. went in there and sniped a, an empty netter. Uh, Coach Mike says, any idea what the lines look like on Saturday? Not too much to complain about. 15 straight wins, Coach Mike. I, I think the only thing really, like Cass said, go back to the old lines. Um but where do you put Corey Perry in? Is it as simple as just replacing Sam Gagne, Cass? I, I think that's what you're going to see. I mean, it was another night where Gagne didn't play a ton of minutes. Uh, I think he played the least minutes out of anybody. So he's going to be the guy that comes out, and 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 that's okay. That's okay. Um, you know you have a guy you can put in that has found ways to put up points that can give you some okay minutes. So it's, I, again, I, I think from a... A, a, a earned offensive standpoint, Gagne is not the guy you want to take out. You want to take mm-hmm. out Brown, maybe Yanmark, but, 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 you I mean, penalty killing didn't have to do anything tonight, but, you know, they have been great on the penalty kill, so it's going to be Gagne. 
I think it's as simple as that. Sam Gagne tonight looking at the stat line. Gagne playing 9.33 and among all Oiler forwards. Yeah, uh, only Derek Ryan played less tonight at 8.56. Right. A little bit surprised there, Cass? A little bit. I'm just pulling that up so I can look if I missed. Okay, 9.33. Yeah, I thought yeah. I thought Gagne was a few minutes less. But um, yeah, I mean... <sighs> I think anytime you wait to the top lines and you have McDavid and Drysdale on one line, mm -hmm. the rest of the guys are going to play a little bit less. Like it, it's just it, a natural byproduct of of top heavy being top heavy, right. um, and a natural byproduct too. I think of it being a, a closer game until they opened it up and, and scored that two nothing goal, where it was like it was it was a closer game. So um, those guys play a little bit less. Um, I mean, it wasn't. It's not like they played five minutes or four minutes. So they still got no. They still got some ice. They got some ice time. Uh, Fat Dan says, good for Pickard. Let's go, Fat Dan. Fat Dan, pretty content. Usually he sends in a pretty uh, lengthy text, but uh, I think a lot, a lot of people just content with that win. And I get it. And and they, yep, it's a it's a win. Yep. Better it's than not an Tuesday. exciting, not an exciting yeah. win. Yeah, but but it a win. Hey, good win. Yep, you got it. Good job. Your guy got the shout out too. That's excellent. Uh, this text from Eden says, hey boys. Another win to keep this incredible streak going. What's impressing me is that every team facing the oil have been playing their A game. There hasn't been an easy win despite the records of their clubs. And Cass, that's a byproduct of the Oilers being a good team with two of the best players in the world, one of the highest scoring forwards in the league right now, and Zach Hyman. And then the fact that they were contenders going into the season, obviously a terrible start, but now they look like contenders yet again. So they're getting every team's fastball, right? Yeah, well, they 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 have all year. They have all year. The, the second you have anybody, you know, anybody playing you, and you have McDavid and Drysaddle in the lineup, yeah, you're you're going to get most teams A games. They're gonna they're gonna know that if they're not sharp, if they're not engaged, if they're not ready, that that you could get absolutely blown out because that's just the offensive potential of the team. So yeah, you you get most teams A games, and they've they've managed to do that. Now now there there have been some games where they haven't played the greatest opponents, and they've just found ways to win in those games, which is great. You need to be able to do that. And there have been a couple pretty good teams where they've just played solid, good, you know, dare I say it, Oilers hockey with their new identity with how they've been playing on this streak. <laughs> dare I say it, playing with some identity in Oilers hockey, that patient, we're just going to keep doing what we do until we score and, and score again and play good defense. They've managed to do that as well. So, um, you know, I'm excited with the game against Nashville. It's a, it's a huge game for Nashville coming up. Mm-hmm. And a big game for Edmonton too, obviously to to win another one, to tack another one on, to to head into the break with all kinds of momentum, with a massive streak rolling. Um, I can think of nothing better that this team, you know, you absolutely want to do that. Um, and you're going to get the absolute best from Nashville, who's you know a, a solid team. I don't want to say they're they're not a great team. They're not a team that's going to threaten to win the Stanley Cup, but they are a solid team, and mm -hmm. they are going to throw everything they have at you. So it's going to be an exciting one. The Preds come into action on Saturday afternoon, 2 o'clock start our time. We'll be on the air at 12.30 for the pregame show. The Preds with a 26-21 and 1 record. That's good for 53 points through 48 games, 5-5 five and five in their last 10. They have a 13-9 and 1 away record, and they won their last game. So they've been hanging in there. They've been feisty. I still think that the Central Division teams like the Preds Blues are kind of up there. They're three points back of Nashville and L.A. And Arizona's at, at 49 points, so four points back of Nashville and L.A. I do think that the Pacific Division teams, if Seattle gets its ass in gear, which it seems to have again, six and four in its last ten. They won their last game, obviously, last night against the Blackhawks. Uh, I could, I think they that the Pacific Division teams should bully those Central Division teams out of those wild card spots. All right, let's step back into the inbox. Dirty Curdy. Dirty Curdy with uh, a a thorough thorough look at the Oilers win. Dirty Curdy says, "Play La Bamba on low, cringeworthy win. At least we don't need to get a goalie. Picks was stellar, and he has earned more starts to keep skins rusted. Vets not getting it deep. Boosh serving pizzas. Nobby has been pulling all the levers, but thought spil uh, splitting up Connor and Leon would have been done." Uh, Russian roulette against bottom feeders. Fogel and Hollywood were involved. Vets had a cafeteria work ethic. 
Brown's puck touches and on ice cue belongs in the press box. <laughs> uh, dirty Curdy, we're, we're not going to argue that one for sure. Uh, can only hope for the worm bump against the Preds. Dirty Curdy with that one. Casa, thorough look at yep. the Oilers win from Dirty Curdy. Do you want to touch on any of those? Yeah, I mean, listen, it, it, it it's a play LeBum on low night. That uh, if I'm gonna jump on one thing, that's what I'm gonna jump on, right? They they it wasn't pretty, it wasn't amazing, it wasn't dominant, but they played enough defense to keep the puck out of their net, and and Pickard made some saves. Um, you know, we already talked about the penalty shot, and you found a way to get a win. So so yeah, mm-hmm. play play Laban on low. Um, was it the perfect game from all the vets? No, no. Um, did they try to force way too many pucks and be way too pretty and not shoot it at times? Yeah, but hey, y- y- you got the win, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sweat that text beyond that. I like it. Dirt- Dirty Curdy is very thorough. Dirty Curdy has a level of expectation for his team, and uh, I actually appreciate his text. Uh, every game, you know, you're getting a a breakdown of what Dirty Curdy thought of the Oilers any particular night. Uh, let's go to Mike in Thunder Bay. Good evening, Mike. It's late out there. Uh, Mike says, Oilers finally showing they're no longer a two-man team. Fogel and McLeod in parentheses. Nice to see that McDavid guy finally chip in. Seems backup goaltender is quickly dropping down Ken Holland's to-do list. Love to see the shout-out. What a great early birthday present for the great one. Happy birthday, Wayne. Good night, Oil Country. Mike in thunder bay sending his regards there uh <laughs> i like this one rip city step says all of a sudden watching the oilers is like watching bob ross paint <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe well this played. game we'll give it yeah. we'll give you this game in columbus for sure oh boy just uh, well but you actually you know what tommy calm what? cool collected maybe less exciting and less yeah. run and gun but you know what bob ross gets the job done with the happy little trees so hey if they want to bob ross this thing the rest of the season i'm all for it very calming very calming and certainly you can snooze while you watch him create a masterpiece uh bob ross r.i.p Oh, uh, good reference there on the Bob Ross. Uh, let's go to this one from Hontorio Moms. Hello, Hontorio Moms. He says, the boys, that game was as colorful as Banana Republic. The orders have developed a regulator. Previous years, this would have been a 6-3 game. Boring is good. Sometimes that's from Hontorio Moms. And then Colorado Rusty says, the team's being patient, starting to feel like code for crappy starts. Need to pick it up. 15 in a row is sweet, though. I want this division. And then uh, Liquid Beaver says, hey, Chicago played hard. Give them credit. But the last 13 minutes, it wasn't even close. Men versus boys. And then maybe th- that's Liquid Beaver seeing what we kind of touched on is the Oilers started to just toy with them a bit when they decided it was time to to end the game. And they sort of did. Yeah, sort uh, of. I mean, I they, they wanted to end the game in the first period. And they were kind of trying to yeah. do it. But but there was too much perimeter play early on. There was. Uh, this one comes in. It says, with how Pickard is playing, do we need an upgrade at the backup position at the deadline? That's from Ed. I've been saying no all along. Cass, I mean, a win like that probably starts to really convince people, you would think. I, I think so. He's played... Pickard has played extremely well in the games that he's played. He has just been stable and solid, which is exactly what you want your backup goaltender to do. We talked yeah. before the game about, you know, what he needed to do was just make the saves he needed to make, which is exactly what he did. Now he got some help. There wasn't a yep. ton of rebounds. There wasn't, a, or, or, or any rebounds that were there. There wasn't a ton of second chances. Like Edmonton did a, a decent job of clearing out the front of the net, making sure that, that there was no loose change just sitting around there for somebody to pick up. Um, and then, you know, he makes the one big save on the, on the penalty shot. So it's like, yep. he, you, you got your big save and you had the steady consistency. And I would say for the most part, that's what Pickard has done. R- really it is. It's not like he's been, you know, making the, let's go to the Skinner Goudreau type of saves every single night. Right. Um, but he's been stable and steady. So it, it absolutely, I mean, both the play of Skinner, this run, the, the, of go- both goaltenders, not just Skinner of Skinner and, and Pickard through this run. 
really have, and I can't remember which which texture it was that texted in, but it really has ease the need for Ken Holland to rush out and do something. And, right. and, and unless it's just like, you can't say no to it and, and it, you know, someone picks up the phone and calls you and it's just like, I can't say no to this. Um, you, you know, you're not rushing out to, to spend all your capital on a goaltender or a backup goaltender right now. Uh, this one from grandpa Dave kind of in line with, uh, the discussion about goalies says Oilers defensive structure now allowing goalies to make the saves that they should and not allowing consistent uh 10 bell chances. Yeah, Grandpa Dave totally with you on that one. I'm going to I'm going to disagree with only the word structure. Oh, okay. Say, I know why, their, I know why. Go ahead. Go ahead. I know why you're saying that. Their defensive execution. I mean, if I change that yes. to execution or play instead of structure, Yes. Then I would completely agree with it. And that might be what he means. He, he might, yeah. or, or she, they might, they might mean that, but well, um, it's grandpa, Dave. Okay. I, I don't I, think, I, grandpa, grand, I guess Dave. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't well, think it there's could be, many ladies. This could be a situation like when my wife, grandpa. it could be a situation like when my wife uh, goes on uh, my YouTube thing and starts commenting in the comments on the nasty chat. I like, love that. You never know. You never know. Oh, Mandy. That's hilarious. Uh, Carmen K Gill 97 says, Tom and Cass, has this team finally learned how to close out games? I haven't seen this since 2005, 2006. Cass, what would you say to Carmen? It, it, I mean, you can't argue with 15 in a row, can you? No. About closing out games and being up a goal in the third period on a team, finding a way to get another one, finding a way to get an empty net. So, yeah, I mean, I, I can't yeah. argue that. Can't. Man, that 5 06 team, like, they didn't figure it out till late in the season. Remember it was kind of an up and down year and they were rotating. Remember they had, who was the goalie that they would always bring in Mike something to, to play in the shootout, say Paul Conklin or Markinen, and was it not Mike Menard. That was a few years before. Oh, I'm, I'm trying to remember who it was too. I remember that happening and thinking he was just the most bizarre thing in the world. Yeah, but. He got traded to Ottawa. I, 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 his last name is eluding me. I know nasties will get it. But uh, yeah, even that 0506 team, like they they got it going in the playoffs, certainly. But um, yeah, for Mike Morrison, thank you, Carmen. That's who it was. Did you ever come across Mike Morrison? I think he was out of the league by the time. I think he was gone by the time I I came in. But I remember Craig McTavish would put him in for the shootouts because he was like a, a specialist. It was the first year ever of the shootout in the NHL, and it, it, I don't cold think it goal. cold yeah. goalie for a shootout. And it worked oh, a bunch nice. of times. So, yeah, Mike Morrison. Thank you, Carmen. Appreciate that. I just I remembered Mike Menard, who got a start late in the season, like in 2001 or 2002, and uh, won that one. But, uh, yeah, Mike Morrison. This, this Oilers team is rounding into form. I'll give them credit for that. Uh, Jimmy says, don't say Ty Conklin or Markinen. That is PTSD. I understand. <laughs> hey, we're coming up on 20 years here. We got to let it you go. You got to move on. We got to let it on. go. I think like five, five years is reasonable for grief. And maybe you, you, you stretched it out a little bit because mm -hmm. of the decade of darkness. Oh, um, yes. Um, so that, that I understand, but we're at a point now where, yeah, we got to, we got to move on. Get, get past almost 20 people. years. Yeah, Work exactly. It. Yeah. And if you haven't, you know what? There's there's lots of good people that you can pick up the phone and call and talk to and, and sort through those emotions, sort through those feelings, get some help. Well said. It is the Oil Stream postgame show. Edmonton, 15 straight victories, a 3 nothing win tonight over the Chicago Blackhawks. Calvin Pickard picks up his shutout, uh, and it's his first of the year and his fifth win of the season, improving to 5-2. and two. He's won his last four starts. Of course, Stuart Skinner's won a franchise record 11 in a row and uh, we'll see if the Oilers can make this 16 straight victories when they take on the Nashville Predators on Saturday afternoon. If you want to send a text to Casser or myself or YouTube Trev 780-218-9999. Nasty chat's going strong. I'm going to get to this one from KL. KL says, hey guys, I'm really liking the Holloway McLeod Brown line. This looks like a legit third line. I could see Perry taking Brown's spot. When he comes in, this was a game that they didn't play their best, but it was a game they could fall back into their system and win by their defense. Something I haven't really seen from the Oiler teams in the past. KL. Cass, I, I agree with a lot of what KL said there. How about you? 
Yeah, I mean, pretty tough to disagree, Tommy. So I'm not going to. I mean, what, you want me to be Joaquin Gage on here and just no, 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 no. I just I anything. Uh, <laughs> and if you had anything on it, you know, uh, Do Rag says the Oilers' win streak is so long, they're on a slump within it. There you go. Uh, slightly, may, maybe accurate. <laughs> yeah, slump inside the win streak. Interesting. Yeah, but, I can't no, be, let's I, actually jump back. I, 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 I think it makes sense. And I know I, you know, whatever. I made mean, no comment thing, but I, I think it makes sense that that could be a spot for Perry to slide into. Absolutely. Um, to to move Brown down to the fourth line, um, and for Perry to slide in. And I, I would love to see that line. I really would. I would love to see that line. Now you lose maybe a little bit of the foot speed. I don't think Perry's as fast as Brown is at this stage in his career, but maybe you get some more goal scoring. Maybe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so on the pregame show today, someone asked if Perry would score before Brown. And I, without Probably. hesitation. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Like Perry might score on Saturday. Do I think yeah. Brown will? No. I, I, would I like to see it? Yep. Do I think it'll happen? No. I can't logically say I think Connor Brown's going to score a goal before Corey Perry when it's it's just gone the way it has. And, I mean, it's too bad for Brown. Uh, he'll get one at some point. Maybe. <laughs> I, I, I want to be Can positive. you imagine? Can you imagine, Tommy, if he didn't score this season? Well, yes, because it happened to Tobias Reader, but that was a miserable season for the Oilers. This one is turning into a pretty good one. It's already been an interesting one, Cass. Dare I say this could become a special season for the Oilers? I don't even want to go there, but potentially. No, like, let's not. Let's not go there. Let's just yeah. go on. You know, just win. Game by game, Tommy. Let's just take game it. Let's take game. it that way. Just like, just like the Oilers have been. Game by game. Game, game by, by game. game. Game by game. Uh, this text from C-Max says, "Hey, Julie the Cat Gaffney in for the shootout, a la D two the Mighty Ducks." Mm. Clutch. Clutch. She made a great glove save. Mm. Fantastic. Uh, G Dog the Hog says, "Can't wait for Perry on Saturday. Taking my kids since it's a daytime game. Too bad it's not a hockey night in Canada game." For Perry's first. Yeah, I think it's just a regional. I don't know. It is a Saturday game. Unless they're doing a triple header. I, I don't I don't know. Uh this one from Displaced You Connor. I, Cass, I'm curious to think or know what you think. Displaced You Connor says, So now the orders are the late nineties devils. Just win, baby. And you played for Jacques Lemaire, right? Yep. This team is not that team. <laughs> Hello. I mean, yeah. they, 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 you know, I I, one of the great things about this streak is that they've won in a variety of different ways. And there will be times where they're going to blow out teams offensively that are going to be higher scoring games. But I would much rather have the Oilers be comfortable playing tighter hockey, being comfortable in those tight games, because that's, that's what happens in the playoffs. Now it's mm -hmm. not, it's not Jacques. Like Jacques was like, you lock it down, you lock it down. And maybe if Gabby, Marion Gabrick gets a, gets a breakaway, maybe you win, <laughs> but it's like, it was like a roll in the dice. Like we're just going to play really, really, really good defense and kind of hope we score. Um, and, and maybe that was just characteristic of the team we were on uh, and, and the team we had, but um, no, this is 100% not a Jacques team. Not even close Tommy. No, no, yeah. <laughs> no. Uh, okay. Good. Good. Thank God. Hallelujah. Cause those games mm -hmm. and teams, that he had were boring as you know what yep. um we did get a text that came in i just found this uh text came in and said props to the Oilers social media team with the amazing picker tweet tonight looking forward to perry in the lineup saturday because tonight's crew would face a significant risk of losing and the picker tweet is uh calvin pickard's head on jean-luc picard's body <laughs> in the captain's chair of the starship enterprise and the, the tweet says, make it so with yep, the O great. and the S cut by uh, the SO. Uh, make it so, Picard. Uh, well done. They were I guarantee they were just sitting on that. They were just of waiting. Course. They were just like, come on, come on. This will I be know great. And that's fantastic. That. I love it. I know you could appreciate that. Uh, this text from Buzz in Nebraska sends in his oh photo of watching us. I love it. Great stuff, Buzz. Thank you. Says, will Hyman and McDavid ever be broken up? So hot right now. Hansel, so hot right now. 
I wouldn't touch it. I mean, you got, you got a guy on pace for over 50. What's he on pace for 55 now, I think? I think so, or so. Yeah. yeah, no, don't yeah. touch it. This one, this one keeps coming up. This one keeps coming up, Cass. I know I want to just, I want to float it out there again because I think it needs to resonate and it doesn't seem to have caught on completely. I kind of get why, but there's a text that comes in. New texter, welcome aboard. Appreciate it. It says Pickard is making a great case for Campbell not making his way back up. And 100% agree on that statement. But there have been people saying, so when is Campbell getting called up? When's Campbell getting called up? Campbell late in the season? The answer is no. You leave him down there. Look what Pickard's doing. And then with how well Pickard's been playing, how well this team's been rolling, if you were to even do that or consider it, you would have to send Pickard through waivers. I'm assuming he gets picked up because of how bad the goalie market is right now. There's no reason to force Jack Campbell back up here. No, nope. Cass, and and I think, nope. and and the text the texter is 100 percent right. He's making a great case for Campbell not making his way back up. Yep, and I think it it should be fairly. I could say this cert with certainty and confidence. We shouldn't even be considering Jack Campbell coming back up here, at all. It is it is as my father would say, Tommy. It is self evident. Self-evident, right? That's, that's what it's like. Th there's zero reason, zero reason right now to bring him back up. It just doesn't make any sense. No. 780-218-9999. Tom Gazzola, Matt Cassian, YouTube Trev with you. A couple more texts to get to, then we'll go inside the Oilers locker room. Trev, how are we looking in the locker room situation? Yeah, I was just uh, was just looking. Still nothing. I got nothing right now. Okay. Okay. Okay, all good. We'll get there soon. Uh, we'll roll along. Nasty chat, keep doing your thing. Uh, this one says, hey, Tommy, what does P.K. Subban think about this fact that all teams are playing their best goalie <laughs> or playing their best against the Oilers? Do you want to just really quickly touch on the P.K. stuff? Like, I don't really disagree with the stuff he said the other day, but the, the first rant that he went on was so, so stuck in November that I was like, Yeah, really? it was pretty stuck in November. Um, hey, I mean, listen. I love that people have different opinions and he is entitled to have that opinion and it gives us something to talk about, but it was a bunch of hot garbage. <laughs> so, Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, again, like good. He's got an opinion. Tells me he hasn't watched very many of the Oilers games and maybe hasn't looked at the stat sheets and maybe hasn't looked at how the rest of the lineup has been playing, but yeah, we'll That's leave funny. it at that. Parnell. Yep. <laughs> it's Parnell Carl. Yep, and that's well what said. we. That's that's actually what we call him on the ice. Yeah, we call him Parn. <laughs> Did he get Parny. mad? Oh, he got he. We Parn. our teams hated each other, so yeah, he got no, mad. Well, yes, yes, uh, that is his name. Uh, anyway, it, we we jest, but uh, yeah. This no, hey, from Oi like what, I said, what? Happy, just I'm just happy he has a different opinion. It's good. It's well, great. It, he's, yeah, he's, he's no, it's good. But like, and the, the, again, the second take he had, like Dusty was saying the other day, he goes. Boy, he didn't even mention like Vancouver and Winnipeg, who are the top teams, you know, in the league right now. And he's like, is he a genius? Is he stirring it up? And I was like, in my head, no. He just didn't consider them, I, I don't think. Judging by his first statement about the Oilers, not mentioning Winnipeg and Vancouver as some of the top teams in the NHL in his follow up statement to backtrack the initial statement, to me, I feel like he just didn't consider them, but yeah, that's just maybe not. Yeah. And he's in the U S so it is what, what it is. It is what, what it is. We've, we've chastised. We've said what we've had to say. Oily sink says Alberta teams going streaking Edmonton with 15 in a row flames with four losses in a row. A couple of powerhouses. This one from Calgary. Glenn says, Hey boys, quite solid win tonight. Nothing flashy. Pickard was solid. What do you think of having Perry playing with Holloway and McLeod on Saturday cast? You kind of hit on that already, right? Yeah, I mean, I I would love to see that. I think that would be a, a I, that's the first place I want to see him play. Now, now maybe from a game speed standpoint, <clears throat> he he might not be at that level yet because because this is going to be his first game in a while. But to me, that's a line that I want to see. Want to see it? Want to see it? I love it. Seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. I can't read this one text. It says fifteen in a row. Uh, and then with a vulgar term towards us, which I know is a joke, 
and I appreciate it. <laughs> um, and I know that's unjust as well. Uh, this one says, don't look now, but the orders have a better winning percentage than the Golden Knights. Okay, looking at the stats now and the standings after the nine games that were played tonight, I'm pretty sure everything's in the books. Yes, everything is done for tonight. Vegas is five points up in Edmonton Cass. Six, three, and one in its last 10. Has played four more games than the Oilers. The Oilers do have a 648 winning percentage to Vegas's 646. Do the Oilers reel them in? And that game on February 6th in Las Vegas, where the pre and post game show and the morning show and the hangout will be live on location, could be a, a very significant one. But what do you think it's about the Oilers reeling them in? Yeah. That's a doozy. I mean, if you want to reel them in, you got to beat them. That's gonna be that's gonna be the big thing, right? Like yeah. that's that's gonna be massive towards uh, doing it. Um, I mean, you have to figure the Oilers lose at some point, um, but really, even if they do, and you say, okay, they got four games on hand, um, uh, you, you know, you win you win three of them, Tommy, mm. and and you're there. So, you know that that all of a sudden, if if you can keep the streak going, or or if you can win the next couple, let's say you beat Nashville, and then you come out of the break and. You win another one. Um, and you tie the record for the longest streak ever. I mean, you, you, you're going to be right there. You're going to be right there. Now, right. It, it's kind of crazy because, you know, two months ago, there was no way that I ever would have said that they're catching Vegas. I would have also never said that they were catching L.A. being like nine points back at that time. And I think they were like 11 or or 12 points back of Vegas at that time. Yeah. Um, but they're within striking distance. Still going to be really, really tough to catch Vancouver. I mean, potentially, could you do that too? Maybe. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it is absolutely possible that they catch the golden Knights. They just got to beat them. That's going to be the big, that's going to be the big one. It will be. Uh, I'm looking forward to that one big time. And Cass, it's funny. The more people I'm, I'm seeing around the rank and then we're getting some texts too. There's the, there's a lot of Oiler fans that are turning that road trip into a holiday. Um, like just at the rink today, people are like, Hey, Going down with my family, maybe we'll see you and the boys. Like, yeah, absolutely. We're going to be around the rink too. And uh, and then a bunch of people saying, you know, we're going to Vegas, then we're going to Anaheim. Maybe we'll go to the LA game too. It's incredible how many people are turning this into a trip. So I feel like the orange and blue will have a heavy presence in the Southwest when uh, everybody goes down to Vegas. And then there's going to be the two games in the LA area. Uh, Edmonton with only two back-to-backs next month, two cast. They've only had a couple already this season. They have a pretty favorable schedule in terms of like days between games and have had that all season. So they need to take advantage and certainly have been of late. As we say this, Cass, when we look ahead to Saturday's matinee matchup against the Nashville Predators, what are you looking for and expecting from the Oilers outside of them making it 16 straight victories? What has to happen in the time between? Well, what am I, what I'm expecting, I'm expecting them to go back to the lines they had prior to this game, prior to the game against Columbus. Uh, I expect dry settle to score like eight goals. Uh, Cause that's oh, okay. pretty, pretty typical um, against the, uh, the Nashville predators or you know, maybe not eight, but a whole bunch. And um, I mean, it, it, Tommy, it's like, we, we ask that every time. And at this point, I mean, you've won 15 games in a row. So it's like, don't change anything. <laughs> like, right. I keep working on the power play, try to get that crisped up in practice. Cause we still, you know, it hasn't been clicking at its at the level that we'd like it to be and that they would like it to be. I and mean, you get a power play goal today, which is great. Um, uh, but, but keep chipping away at that, keep working and just keep that focus. Cause that focus has been that focus and patience has been the maturity as it were, has been fantastic. Cass, you were fantastic all day today. Two guys in a goalie. Pre game show, post game show, hairs on point. Great mm. work as always, my friend. I look forward to catching up with you Saturday afternoon. Me too. I think we both need to start advocating uh, for votes for the uh, the best hair at the Etsy's. So you win. I'm... Yes. No, mm. hey, it, 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 you know, it's going to be tight. It's a tight race. It's a tight, tight race. race. Yep. <laughs> All right, Cass. Great stuff as always, my friend. We'll catch up with you Saturday. Sounds good, buddy. That's our game analyst, Matt Cassie, and helping us break down the orders. 3 0 win over the Chicago Blackhawks. Keep those texts coming in. 780 218 9999. Nasty chat. Continue to be the nasty chat because it's wonderful. And I see a lot of people are subscribing. Our numbers are going up. We're getting very close to 7,000 
subscribers on our YouTube channel. We really appreciate that so much. And uh, also really appreciate people listening on the audio stream, whether it's on the TuneIn app or via our website. And then uh, we will have an announcement coming up soon in regard to potential other avenue where you can listen to our fine content here at EST. I also want to take the time to do one thing before we go inside the Oilers locker room, and it has to do with an upcoming big game that's happening on February 11th. Join Edmonton Sports Talk for the Super Bowl at Century Casino Sports Bar and Lounge Sunday, February 11th. You'll have a chance to win EST merch, a spot on the Hangout, and more. Plus, the 6 o'clock or logger will be in stock and available for the big game only at Century Casino on Fort Road. We're very much excited for that one. Uh, we had our meeting yesterday. Apparently, we're going to make a night of it, and all of us are staying at the uh, hotel above the Century Casino and then doing all of our shows from the Century Casino Sports Bar and Lounge on the Monday following the Super Bowl. So it should be a doozy. You can see YouTube Trev and his formidable mustache live and in action, probably cutting up a rug on the dance floor. I think, Trev, you're going to be dancing by the time you have two or three, six o'clock. <laughs> no, right? no, 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 not a, not a chance. That was uh, that was very behind the scenes. It was just us boys, but uh, definitely not at a whole, like, you know, with all the nasties there, that's definitely not something I want them seeing or talking about because... Uh, <laughs> that was terrible. That was, I'm looking back at it. Oh my gosh, what a goofball, but whatever. That was yeah. fun. It was a fun night. Yeah. You were very popular that night. That's for sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, we're going to go inside the Oilers locker room after the three, nothing blanking of the Blackhawks. Who's up first, Trev? Yeah. He centered his own line tonight. Here is Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Yeah. Uh, stuck with it. To, you know, uh, yeah. I know. Keep the streak alive, but yep. you know, just get another victory. <clears throat> I mean, we knew coming in uh, it wasn't going to be an easy one for sure. Uh, the way these guys have been playing lately, I know they've uh, they're pretty banged up, but they're just they're just working. And we experienced that in Chicago. I think we had 15 or 16 shots or something like that. I mean, it's uh, we, we expected a, a tough game tonight, and the, uh, they lived up to it for sure. But um, when we needed, uh, we got the saves from Pixie, and uh, we just kind of st stuck around and um, uh, played within ourselves and uh, stayed confident. Because you think of, uh, well, you know, I know we talked a lot about Stewart. It's not easy being a backup goalie and coming in sometimes once a week or so to, to step in with lots of pressure to keep the streak alive and keep this team going in the right direction. I think every time he's stepped in, he's he's been outstanding for us. Um, the Detroit game, he made some huge saves uh, to keep us in it. Same thing tonight. Um, <clears throat> obviously, like you said, it's uh, it can't be easy. I mean, I, I don't I don't really experience that, so it's uh, it's uh, I can't speak for him, but I I understand it. Uh, wouldn't be easy uh, to just step in um, every once in a while, but I mean, uh, every time he's in there, he's he's dialed in and uh, he's making those big ones when we need him to. Ryan pulled away in the third for the second straight game. But how would you rate the overall performance of the group tonight? Um. I mean, overall, I, I think we uh, played a pretty solid 60. We, we kept it simple. Like I said before, it, we understood it wasn't going to be an easy one. Uh, we weren't going to be trading chances, and uh, they don't really give up many uh, odd man rushes. So it's going to come uh, a lot, a lot of uh, shots from point, uh, a lot of just rebounds and building off that. But I thought we did a good job just staying around and um, staying confident uh, in our ability to just uh, just to be there and uh, be able to come out with two points. This new way you're playing, like here to tell you, it's not as exciting as the old way. <laughs> it wins. It's good. <laughs> what's, what's it like from your side? Is it's exciting for us. I mean, <laughs> that's, that's how we want to play. Uh, we've been striving to play like this for a long time now. And uh, I mean, it's just it's both staying around in games. Uh, obviously, the goalies have to step up and, and make the big saves when uh, we need them to. And they've been doing a great job of that. Uh, I think defensively we've just been solid. It's it's not trading chances here and there. Obviously we have some guys that can open games up, but uh, we don't need to do that every night. It's just uh, staying within ourselves and, uh, and trusting the process. And um, I think it's uh, it's paying off right now. Are you finding that teams are sort of getting up to you a lot more than they used to? You kind of have a target on your back. Everybody wants to be the team now that ends this year. Yeah, well, I, I I mean if I was on the other side, uh, I would I would be thinking the same thing. I remember going into Columbus and. When they're they're on a roll too, and you definitely want to uh, try to end it, but uh, I think uh, we're just, we're not thinking too much of it. We're just trying to play the same way every night, and it's uh, like right now it's paying off. But Sam said earlier today that when he was with Columbus, when they won 16 in a row, the win streak was a big focus for them. But it hasn't been so much for this group. Why and how is that? Well, I mean, 
first of all, the start we had, uh, we know that we, we need a couple streaks, a couple uh, um, good stints to, to kind of claw, uh, claw our way back, and we're still not in the position that uh, we're, we're not satisfied. I mean, we want to keep getting better and better, so, I mean, obviously we've strung a lot together here, um, but we want to ke keep the same mentality of just playing solid every night. Uh, making it a tough night for, for the other group coming in here every single night. So um, I think we've done a great job of not getting too high right now and uh, obviously a big one on Saturday to finish it off. Ryan, Chris was talking this morning about maybe the lines being a little bit stale uh, last game. Did you sense that? And how did you feel like the kind of the response was from the board? I mean, I thought, uh, I thought tonight every line chipped in and um, uh, played solid defensively and, uh, and had some good looks. So uh, it's good to see. All right, there's Ryan Nugent Hopkins as the Oilers get a 3 nothing win. And there is YouTube Trev joining the program tonight. What's up, YouTube Trev? Good to see you, pal. Yeah, good to see you, man. It's uh, it's it's weird. Uh, that was the first, I, I can't remember, it's been a few months uh, since the last post-game, pre and post that I've missed. So it was nice. I, I got to listen to, to you and Zach to come. You guys crushed it. And uh, just driving back, man, I loved it. I thoroughly enjoyed it. And it makes me happy because it's, it's just cool. Like, I, I remember, and it's just going back to, you know, it's, um, it's been a year since I met you guys. And I was telling Maddie, like, I used to watch every single oil stream, every single, or listen at the time to every single oil stream and uh, two guys in a goalie and and now i'm here so it's it's, it's kind of ruined that for me because uh, i i'm watching it live but uh no it it the quality when I'm when I'm not in the building, man, and like when I, it's just it's so exciting that we're putting out like really really nice content for all of our viewers, and uh, it seems to be you know reciprocated in the nasty chat. They they're loving it, so it was cool to be on the other side of things. It was definitely a little different, but uh, it's nice to be back. I will say that is beautiful what you just said. Good yeah, job, pal. Thanks, buddy. Very very nice. Very very nice. Uh, why don't you also tee up the next bit of audio and video we're going to see in here. Yeah, let's uh, let's go to the netminder tonight. Uh, Calvin Pickard with his fifth career shutout. Six years since you've had a shutout in the NHL. Just some thoughts on being here and having a win like that tonight. Yeah, shutouts are uh, definitely a team set. I thought we defended well all night. Um, definitely took over towards the latter part of the game, and um, you know I made some saves, but I thought we cleared out a lot of rebounds and, and blocked a lot of shots. So it's definitely a, a team shutout for sure. Kevin, you had a start in two weeks. How would you? Yeah, I've been th been through this before for sure. Um, practice time is uh, is big for me. Um, definitely got a lot of time with, with Schwarty and, and a lot of team practices. So um, getting my chance to go in today, uh, not putting too much pressure on myself and um, going from there. Calvin, it seemed like you were all over that, that kind of shot. You didn't feel like you. Uh, had that track pretty well. Uh, yeah, I just uh, I always remind myself to be patient and uh, get out and have a good gap. So um, when he took that shot, I was in a good spot. So um, it was a good time to make a save right, th right at the end of the second period there. Do you? I don't know what you thought when you came up originally and joined the Oilers. If it was going to be a long stint or a short one, but you've been here a long time now. What's it been like in your personal life? Uh, you're a full-time NHL guy again. I'm not sure if that was in the plans this year. Uh, I mean, it's always what you're striving to do, for sure. Um, when I got called up, it's a good opportunity for me. And, um, you know, it started off with not much action there for a while. But, uh, you know, I've been happy with where my game's at the last couple of months. And uh, I just want to keep doing my thing. What's it been like for you being part of this win streak? Just seeing it all unfold, being part of it? Yeah, for sure. No, it's, uh, you know, you're not going to have many 15-game winning streaks without two goalies. And, um, like I said, when I get my chance to play, I just want to go in and not to not put too much pressure on myself, and um, you know, stick to the, with the things I know, and and uh, I just do my thing. Is it hard not to put a little pressure on yourself? You don't want to be the guy that goes in there and the street gets. <laughs> I mean, if you think of it that way, for sure, you're going to be nervous and and have a lot of. Uh, you, you don't want to put that pressure on yourself. Obviously, it's in the back of your mind. Obviously, um, you know, playing against Chicago, they played well tonight. They worked hard and, and kind of threw a lot at us, but. Um, as the game went on, we uh, we took over, which was nice. But uh, yeah, it's been a good ride. But uh, we're taking it game by game for sure. Uh, looked like the happiest guy on the ice for you was Stuart Skinner. Uh, what's that relationship like? How's it grown between the two of you? Yeah, it's been really good. Um, you know, he's been electric lately. It's been fun to watch him play, and and uh, you know, he's he's single-handedly won us a few games for sure on the streak. So. Um, 
you know, off the ice, he's a great person. Um, it makes it that much better for sure. So um, it was nice to see him excited for me. And, and uh, I just wanted to, you know, obviously he's been playing a lot lately. And it was good to get him out of the net and, and get me in there. So it's, uh, it's good. It's, it's a really good relationship we have. All right, there is Calvin Pickard picking up the shutout tonight. And uh, he hadn't recorded a shutout since November 23rd, 2018 against the Rangers. He made 26 saves that night. Pickard improving to 5-2 and two on the season. And uh, his numbers have been really good. That is four straight victories for Calvin Pickard. And a really easygoing guy. You could see it and hear it there when you're in the locker room with him. He's just a pro. Everything just rolls off his shoulders. You know, being a guy that's bounced up and down between the NHL and the AHL the last few years, nothing really phases him, Trev, is basically what I'm saying. Yeah, he seems like a very like nonchalant, pretty chill guy. That's what I've uh, I've exactly. always got from him, and uh, y you can kind of see it on the ice, right? He's he's never really bothered. Uh, you know, I don't know if that's a that's a good thing or a bad thing, but uh, the guys seem to love him. Y you hear what he said, Stuart Skinner. He's always just been uh, rallying, whether it was uh, Jack Campbell or uh, you know Calvin Pickard. Now uh, it's it's nice to see, and I think that that goes well. You look at the connection, the goalie connection that uh, the Boston Bruins had last year, right? Uh, they just, uh, the tandems, like, it, it, it works. It, it's nice that, uh, you know, I feel like the closer that the, the two goalies are, the, the, the better, you know, they just support each other and it uh, just goes to show, um, you know, how close this team is. And it's nice to see. I think that that is ultimately uh, going to help them in the long run, just how, how close they are. So you'll love to see it, Tommy. Good point, because that reminded me of a story last season during training camp and in the preseason, Pickard hadn't been sent down to Bakersfield yet. And Skinner had a good preseason game. And I remember I, we didn't have a post game show on 1260 that night. Cause we only picked a, a few uh, preseason games where we would do the show. And I remember before we talked to Skinner in the scrum post game, Calvin Pickard walked over to Stuart Skinner and gave him like a big bro hug and said, great job tonight. Like I had never seen a backup in, in I don't know, 15 years of doing this or whatever it is now, I've never seen a backup goalie go to the other goalie and do that. And uh, that, I think that is kind of a tell to the type of person he is. And you're seeing it, you're hearing it now. And to see Calvin Pickard up in the NHL, taking advantage of an opportunity, having success is just a, a feel good thing and uh, good for him for sticking with it. Trev, who's next? Yeah, we'll uh, we'll go to Darnell Nurse and then uh, Chris Knobloch. Here is Darnell Nurse. Solid team effort defensively. Didn't give up a lot when you did. Your goal is perfect. Yeah, picks was a uh, great first tonight. Another really good uh, goal time performance for us. But yeah, we didn't uh, we didn't give up too much. It probably wasn't the most exciting game to, to watch on the outside. But I thought for us, we stuck uh, to our structure. When things got uh, you know a little bit hairy in the D zone, we. You know, collapse and, and we're able to take care of uh, their chances. Do you feel more comfortable as a team now in those low scoring games? Matias talked about that at the end of last year that that's something that the group needed. Like, are you feeling that in the games? Is it that comfortable in those tight situations? Yeah, no, I think that's, I mean, over the course of this last month and month and change, uh, we've had a lot of these situations where we get into tight games and, um, you know, the only way you get comfortable with it is, is playing with within those situations more and more and we've uh, done a good job of it lately. Is that what this is? is big, does it become a dress rehearsal to just get good at playing 2 nothing games, 3-1 games until the playoffs when you know they're coming? Yeah, I mean, hopefully, um, you know, there's there's more games that if you play the right way, the offensive chances come uh, a little more often than maybe over the last stretch. But, yeah, you got to get more and more comfortable because uh, as the season gets deeper and deeper, uh, you know, those those games when five, you know, four or five goals are being scored become, uh, you know, more and more minimal. So for us, we got to get more uh, or continue to be comfortable in these situations. You alluded to it. It's not overly exciting to watch. Uh, as a team, when you're playing in these tight games, is it, you know, is, uh, as a team more engaged? Is it more fun to play? Is it you know, the 5 4 stuff you used to play? Uh, yeah, I think, I mean, speaking uh, from a from a defenseman, uh, it's nice when you're able to, to shut things down, limit chances, um, you know, and, and, and play well and, and sound defensively. So, um, well, from my perspective, I think it's pretty fun to play in these uh, type of situations. Is this harder hockey to play than maybe the stuff that uh, different uh, areas of Oilers have played before, or is it just different? Um, you, you know what? Uh, 
I don't know, every night's every night's different. I can't say. Uh, you know, you play an 82 game schedule. The, the grind is the grind, and uh, it, it's all it's all tough. Um, but I think you know we've we've played some really good hockey here over the last month, and like I said month and change, and uh, this guy continue got a whole lot of uh, hockey to be played. Does it feel like it's on cruise control a little bit? No, Just no, no, not at all. Um, you get into cruise control in this league, you start to lose games and, and let a game slip. So we can't uh, can't let that happen at all. You guys have been getting some good goaltending from Stuart Skinner over the last month. Just thoughts on uh, Calvin Pickard coming in here and playing some really good hockey. Yeah, I mean they've, they've both been great. When when Picks has been in there, uh, he's had some huge nights for us as well. So um, you know, both guys when they get in there, we have lots of confidence and um, obviously bring the work ethic to to the rink each and every day, and it pushes all of us. There is Darnell Nurse uh, embracing every situation that he has to deal with. Darnell Nurse tonight. If you're wondering how Darnell played, uh, no points, even two hits, three shots, a quiet 21 13 for the Oilers veteran blue liner. All right, Trev, set up our last bit of audio and video. Last but not least, Edmonton Oilers head coach Chris Knobloch. But tonight, Calvin Pickard goes out there and gets a shout-out. Just some thoughts on his play tonight. We're very happy with Picks. He's been a great teammate. Uh, his attitude, his work ethic on practice. Uh, you know, there's guys that you cheer for and you're happy when they have success. He's absolutely one of them. And, you know, since I'm, I've been here, I've noticed he's played really well. Like, very solid. And, you know, he's had some tough games where we haven't defended very well in front of him. But overall, his... I think every single game he's been really solid for, it. and tonight he was out <coughs> outstanding. Yeah, and usually when you talk about Oilers hockey, you talk about high-octane, high-scoring games. It hasn't been like that recently. You guys are pulling out some pretty close wins, so what's going into preparing for winning games like this? We guys are sticking with it, and we're getting better as the game goes on, and we'd like our starts to be a little bit stronger. We'd like to get the first goal and not look back. Unfortunately, it hasn't been like that. We're just um, we're just playing good enough to win right now. I think we got a lot more on our group, but um, as a coach, we're just as a coaching staff, we're always pushing our guys, trying to get better at something each day. And um, right now, I think we've been good enough each night to win games, and that's that's about it. Chris, this is another game where you've allowed two or fewer goals, getting the shout out obviously tonight. What did you like defensively tonight? You know, I thought we did a good job of getting back into position, and usually breakdowns happen on the entries into the defensive zone. Guy, winger swings away, the defenseman doesn't play the body in the corner. There's some kind of breakdown, but I like our details coming back into our defensive zone, and we are sorting things out. You know, there's a lot of other things that could have been better on the our play with the puck. Um, I think we defended more than we needed to tonight. But I like that our guys, every single group, has been doing those fine little details. And it doesn't take any skill to come in into the defensive zone and stop. And just takes a little bit of concentration. And guys have been doing that. And we've been able to defend pretty well. Uh, this morning. All right. That was head coach Chris Knobloch. Uh, just good enough to win is how his team's playing, in his opinion. Yes, they have 15 straight victories, but always looking for that little bit more and that level up and uh, not hiding it. Chris Knobloch saying they are just playing good enough to win. We'll see if they sharpen things up Saturday against the Nashville Predators. All right, we have a bit of business to get to before we say goodnight. I will get to a couple of texts as well. Time now to get to the player of the game, brought to you by Damon Bunting, REMAX Elite. Damon Bunting, consistent top-producing realtor in Greater Edmonton and among REMAX Realtors. He and his team would love to help you find that right home or make the move from your current home. Community-driven. He understands what it takes to make a difference in our city. Check him out, damonbunting.com, or visit his Instagram at Damon Bunting Real Estate. Mr. YTT, take it away. 
Yeah, thank you for that, Tommy. Uh, I think it's a pretty obvious one tonight. Anytime you get a shutout, you're definitely going to be in the runnings for the player of the game, and that's exactly what Calvin Pickard did tonight. He got his uh, his fifth career shutout, so the first one in six years. He looked really good tonight, uh, and he's looked he's looked really good whenever he's been called upon. So if that's something that the Oilers can get used to, that's great. Honorable mention to Dylan Holloway. Thought he's, he was just tremendous, and I'm very looking forward to seeing what he can do in the next few games. But Calvin Pickard, buddy, you are absolutely crushing. It. That's so good to see. The Oilers are buzzing. Calvin Pickard's buzzing. Everyone's buzzing. But uh, tonight, it's Calvin Pickard. You got the player of the game. Good job. Well done. Uh, 27 save. Shout out for Pickard. He improves to 5-2 and two on the season. Let's get to a couple of texts before we wrap up. Uh, Fergie's Prostate said, Tom, seriously, you need to take Dusty and Eric to a haberdashery. And also adds, uh, that's not a mustache on YTT. That's just Trev eating a coffee crisp sideways. <laughs> oh, thank you <laughs> I don't know what this. that means, but sure. Well, I've, have you seen you eat a panini? Yeah, no, I, I get it now. I get it now. You weirdo. I, yeah. Uh, Joelle says, uh, oh, she's sending in gifts. Uh, C-Mac says, when the orders are doing just enough to win against teams like Chicago and Columbus, will it be difficult to step up? against teams like Vegas and Vancouver. C-Mac, I sure as hell hope not. Sure as hell hope not. And uh, Cass kind of touched on it a little bit when it is these teams. He thinks, or he in his experiences, says that it just you're not firing on all cylinders like you would against better uh, opposition. So the, the test will be Saturday against Nashville. The bigger test will be uh, that game on the sixth against the Vegas Golden Knights. We'll see what the LA Kings look like in a couple of weeks from now and see if the Oilers can handle the Anaheim Ducks again, but they need to elevate their game. Certainly they, they can't play that game tonight and expect to win against a, a Vancouver team or a Vegas team. They need to be better and tighter. And I think you heard that from Chris Knobloch, like the quote that uh, C-Mac used, just enough to win. He did not sound like a guy that was ready to pop bottles or anything like that. So uh, we'll see if they can get the work done. Hone in on the focus, and when those better opponents come their way, take care of business and play sharper overall. Atif rolls in and says, Hey, Tommy, YouTube Trev is starting to look like the lead singer of a famous rock band, Lettered Skittered. Pickard was awesome. The Oilers are starting off games slow lately, then bringing the heat. Any worries with these starts of the game from Atif? Yeah, kind of, but at the end, they're winning. That sugarcoats it for sure. Um, and then, like we were saying with C-Max text earlier, if they elevate their play against the better opposition and they get the results, then I think everybody can breathe easy. But that's not to say you can't enjoy the 15 straight wins as the Oilers get it done against the Chicago Blackhawks. YouTube, Trev, any final thoughts from you? Yeah, I think you you got it right on the head there, Tommy. Uh, the Oilers in uh, recent memory, in particular, Leon Dreisaitl and Connor McDavid have really shown up uh, against the Nashville Predators. So uh, am I expecting them to? They haven't really been supernova the, as of late, so it... It, it kind of makes sense. They they might be able just to, it's one of those things that it might actually be uh, on Saturday that they, they show up. But the last time that they played, Nashville was also a matinee and uh, they lost that game, right? So they're going to have to show up. Nashville is... Uh, they, they can't expect to win right there. They're going to have to bring it, which they have been, you know, as of late, but they, they can't, they can't be like this, Tommy. They can't be like this. Uh, they, they can't expect to win. Um, so yeah, as long as they show up, which I think they will, the, the history shows that they, they, they do show up against Nashville Predators. So I'm very looking forward to it. I always like to see what, uh, what they do in particular, Leon Dreisaitl. If you're a betting man, bet on him. So I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be good. Absolutely. YouTube, Trev, good stuff. Uh, people asking on the nasty chat, what is your personal YouTube channel? You do put out videos and content. Uh, give it a little bit of a of a shout out right now. Yeah, it's uh, it's above average, and 
yeah, just above average. One word. I've been doing it for three years now, and um, yeah, it's kind of really what got me into to knowing you and, and Dusty. So it's it's really cool. Uh, it's going really good right now. So here's hoping that that continues. And just like EST, it's a it's smooth sailing right now. We're 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 really climbing, and uh, yeah. So definitely check it out. Above average. I do it, like educational videos, uh, not just on the Oilers, um, primarily Oilers content. But um, I'm starting to shift away and, and do a, you know a little bit more around elsewhere around the league so uh yeah definitely go check it out above average there you go youtube trev celebrating one year knowing dusty and i and i apologize uh formally for calling you travis that night um, i got everybody else's name right on staff that night i was the only but, one that uh, come and talked to you I was the only one that ah. come and talked to you. And yeah, that was so good. No, I laughed my butt off. I remember I watched the episode like that night or whenever it was uploaded. It might have been the next day. And uh, I was just chuckling. I was just smiling more than I usually do. It was really, really cool. I'm like, Travis, that's me. He meant to say Trevor, but Travis. <laughs> so it's pretty good. <laughs> well, Travis, uh, you've done great work since you've joined our team here full time at EST. And uh, how about you take it away and close us out tonight? Oh, snap. I was not expecting that. So, uh, yeah, the Oilers look to take uh, things. Oh, they look to make 16 straight against the Nashville Predators at Saturday. It's a matinee. Uh, the boys in blue are looking really good. And uh, that concludes this episode, this edition of the Oil Stream Post Game Show from Tom Gazzola and YouTube Trap. Oh, Matt Cassian, your boy. Uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you then. Take her easy, guys. Have a wonderful night.